Welcome to episode 43 of the Relationship Marketing Podcast with Cody B. Today's guest is Ala Bardove. Ala has been a successful business entrepreneur the last seven years. She has consistently been one of the top sales reps for new customer acquisition in Neora, formerly Nerium International, a multi-billion dollar company. Through her Sell Yourself for Success training platform, Ala has a unique ability to connect with sales professionals across various industries and help them accelerate sales by providing the tools and strategies for increased selling. Alla is also involved with the Nancy Lieberman Charities. Her work and passion for philanthropy is changing the lives of young people. And now, Cody B. Hey everybody, this is Cody B. Welcome to our Relationship Marketing Podcast. Super excited for the show today and uh, super excited for every single week. You know, we're really blessed. We're really blessed at this podcast to have so many incredible people come on and share their wisdom with us. Uh, we have a special one today. Um, Ala Bardo, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you for having me today, Cody. I'm excited well, I'll to tell be you, here we're, with you. We're excited. You know, we, we, uh, our, our viewer or our listeners have been introduced to you. We have a voiceover up front that kind of shares your background a little bit. So they, they've already been introduced to who you are and a little bit about your background. It's always interesting to have people on that uh, have created an, a, incredible professional careers, professional sales careers, and then gone on to train others how to be successful in sales. And on top of that, to have been born and raised in another country and come to this country and have to learn language and culture and everything else and do all those other things. And that's who we have today with you. We're excited to learn from you today. So selling or sell yourself for success, sell yourself for success.com is your company. We talked a little bit in the pre-show and uh, we're just going to kind of jump right in. You, you were explaining to me that sell, sell yourself for success.com. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that started, how long you've been in business with that particular entity, and uh, just give us a little of that background. Well, sell yourself for success. I've um, actually been in the business for about two and a half years. And what I do with it, it offers entrepreneurs and outside sales professionals. I I offer training. I provide them with the skills that they can actually go out and improve improve um, how they attract clients, improve their sales, and also it builds their self-confidence. And the reason for the name Sell Yourself for Success is because, as you also mentioned in your book, it's all about selling yourself first. So you sell yourself first before you sell your product, your service, or your idea. And so while the company, as I mentioned to you, is that while the company is about two and a half years old, it all started um, um, about 30 to 40 years ago when I immigrated to this country. And I can go into that. Well, yeah. So when you immigrated here, you, you did some unique things. Didn't you, didn't you sell door-to-door or something? I did. Um, so I sold door-to-door vacuum cleaners while I was in college studying accounting. And so a lot of people say, well, why were you studying accounting? And I didn't speak any English. And I said, one of my teachers told me, hey, you're great with numbers. You should study accounting. And I had no idea what it was. But in high school, I did some sales. And what I have noticed that while I had a huge language barrier, because obviously it's difficult, you're as, you're as a, it's difficult being a teenager. It's even more difficult being a teenager, teenager in a country where you don't know the culture, you don't speak the language. And what I have noticed that while I was selling, as I am selling, there are no barriers to in the sales process to kindness to your smile and there you can start the sales process with just yourself so you can start it doesn't cost you anything to be kind and to smile and to really ask people some questions and being authentic and so what i meant by being authentic is just accepting for who you are who i was i am the person who had a broken english and I was trying to sell and I connected, I connected with the people. And so that's where it's all started. And um, I was quite successful in sales. It was not without, um, it was not without troubles and going through ups and downs of selling door to door vacuum cleaners that I have developed and designed my own system that I have actually implemented then and practiced for 30, over 30 years. 
So I had the chance to meet you um, at, at one of our big events. We had a large event called the Relationship Marketing Grand Summit. You were in attendance there and you were actually representing a charity, a Nancy Lieberman Charities that, that we are involved with. And uh, we had an incredible opportunity to meet, meet backstage. You even came up on stage. It was the first time I ever met you. I mean, you know, we, I, I didn't know you. I, I, I'd never heard of you. But I met you for the first time at this event. And one of the things that I noticed is that you did have, you, you had an instant way of connecting. And it was, it really wasn't through, I mean, I, it was through some words, but not a lot of words. Like, it, it, like you mentioned, you know, a lot of what you teach in um, Sell Yourself for Success is how to, how to present yourself, how to sell yourself. But I got to tell you, man, you, you, <laughs> you showed me how to sell yourself without even happening to say anything. Like your example of, of how you exude yourself, how you come up, you know, how you introduce yourself. I mean, I just look at that. When I saw you come, I was like, well, you're just naturally gifted at that. You're just naturally gifted, naturally talented in your ability to, to have instant charisma and instant dialogue with people. Is that true? Is it, is it a gift or is it something you can teach? You know, it is absolutely, it is absolutely something that it can be learned and practiced. So when people think, you know, I have some people have presence or the people have charisma or people have confidence. It is not something you're born with. Uh, yes, you maybe there is a certain aspect, but it is something that you can absolutely learn and practice. And so, what I teach in my workshops because this is, it's my my system is four P's, and the first P is presence. So, how do you gain presence and how do you gain conf confidence? And that's what I teach people. And it all starts with you. So there are some things that you can immediately do, and then some things will take you years to become that person that exudes confidence and that people are attracted to. You know what I tell people, I said, you know, just think of a person, there's always that person. You walk into the room and if you close your eyes, you can feel them no matter where you are. So there's something about them. It's the energy, it's the presence, and it's not the way you're dressed, it's not how you look, but there's something within you. And so that's what I teach in my workshop. So that's, um, I probably spend good 30 to 40% of my signature workshop on presence and how do you achieve that presence? Okay, and I so give people actionable items that they can do, steps. So the first one's presence. T tell us what the four Ps are. So the four Ps are presence, people, product, and persuasion. And those are the four, th the four Ps that really helped me to become the top door-to-door -to -door salesperson. And like I said, it was not without trials. It was not without difficulties uh, when I was selling door-to-door -door vacuum cleaners. And the reason I did not quit, I just couldn't have my family and my friends say, I told you so, because I was in college. I was studying accounting. I had two accounting jobs. And here I am doing door-to-door -door sales. But doing that provided that connection connection to people and i absolutely love love that so so one of the things i noticed again in our first interaction and i'm assuming correct me if i'm wrong with your training but <laughs> i'm assuming that what i'm going to share right now has to still has to do with presence you know you know how you create presence when i first met you there was instant rapport there was instant um, interest dialogue uh, I was intrigued uh, just by just by your countenance, um, but here's here's what got me the most. All of those things made me want to talk to you, but what really pulled me in was the fact that that you came across as this amazingly polished, uh, incredible person that was successful, has lots to offer, but you, you had a way where you instantly made everything about me. Like it was, it was almost instant. Like you came across like you were this all put together person, but you instantly kind of turned it back to where all of the focus was on me and you, you had a humble presence about you. So a lot of polished salespeople they're, they have a presence, but I wouldn't 
put the word humble in front of it. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people that they, they don't have a humble presence. They have a presence. A lot of salespeople are a large and in charge presence. You had a humble presence. Like you were very humble and you were very genuine in your desire to serve me. And that was in the first two and a half minutes of talking to you. So is that part of the presence thing? Yeah, absolutely. It is actually, it is part of the presence, a big part of it. And then it's also part of actually going through the whole process through all of my other P's. And what I always tell people in sales, whether it's sales, where it's you take you out of the equation. It's not about you. It's not about you. You have to be genuinely interested in the other person and provide value. And you know what I also say, life is about creating value. And I said, I always say, if I am not selling, I am not creating value. Therefore, I am always selling. And it is one of something that I wrote and I say it in all of my workshops. And there's also a part, you know, when you talk to salespeople and they said, well, you know, I don't need any confidence training. I am confident. And there's, a, there's an aspect that there, there's a confidence and then there's arrogance. And so a lot of salespeople, uh, and I hate to even say that to put them in that category, but they are um, arrogant. So if you look at the statistics, um, salespeople are perceived as pushy. And um, actually 85% of people out there in, in this universe think salespeople are pushy and it, it's across all industries. So it's not just you know, in a door-to-door -door sales or a car salesman industry, it's, all, it's across the board. So what I always say, I said, you know, I am so glad that people come to my workshops because when you leave today, I said, not only do we wanna show the world, hey, we can go out there and we can sell, but we can also lead with kindness. We can be humble. We can be truly be interested in people. And a lot of times people look at me, they said, I just can't believe you sold vacuum cleaners. I can't believe that you with your presence would do door to door sales and, and sell that. And I said, you know, I said, I never sold a vacuum cleaner in my life. I said, you think I am selling vacuum cleaner. I said, I am selling a clean home. I make sure that people don't have to sleep in it, eat in it, they don't have to see it. I am so exciting because if excited because if I sell something, I'm providing value, and I am I'm proud of what I'm selling because I am delivering value. And if the focus is also always on the other person, it keeps you it keeps you kind, it keeps you humble. And it all starts with a smile. And also I teach that in the first P, you only have, in the first P of my system presence, you really have sometimes three to four seconds to make that first impression. And if you can't get past that three to four seconds, it is very difficult to go through that sales process. You know, that's what will depend if somebody is, even somebody opens the door when you knock on the door, if they're gonna smile at you, if they're gonna talk to you, if they're gonna let you inside their home. So the presence is so important and it's that smile, it's that kindness. And I just tell people fall in love with sales. It's beautiful. So I want to go back to a saying that you said that you say you say quite often is that something about if you're not in, if you're not selling, you're not adding value. Therefore I'm always selling. If I'm not selling, I'm not adding value. Therefore I'm always selling. Is that, is that right? Is that, that is right. That is right, Cody. I actually okay. have it on my, on the slide in one of my workshops, because that's what I think. I mean, life is creating value. And when I say I'm selling, what people don't realize is that it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how old you are. You know, I have three kids. We all sell. I mean, we all sell ourselves every day. You walk into Starbucks and you all place an order. You, you sell yourself. You're in corporate world. You sell yourself because you might not be actually exchanging money, but you're selling your ideas. You're applying for a job. What are you doing? You're selling yourself. So, and the so, way I look at it, you're providing value. Yeah. So, okay. So this podcast is about relationship marketing. We have a annual event called the Relationship Marketing Grand Summit. You attended it just in the last uh, last uh, couple months ago, uh, where we have numerous speakers come uh, around and talk about relationship marketing. And, you know, and I have the book, Power of Human Connection, how relationship marketing is transforming the way people succeed. And relationship marketing resonates relationship. It's about relationship it's about caring it's about assessing people's needs it's about all of those things 
So when our audience comes in, they really resonate with that. They implement it in their sales process or marketing process and they gain success with it. And therefore we get more and more viewership and more and more following because it works. I mean, it's just the process works. Here's one of the challenges. We teach this principle. We teach this philosophy of relationship first, marketing second. So people have a tendency to get scared. I guess that's the best way to put it. They get scared of the word sales. Like the sec, like you get into this environment that we have here, relationship marketing, and then people all of a sudden are like, ooh, sales is a bad word. You know, I, I can't sell anything. I just got to be there for people. I need to love you and care about you and, you know, sing kumbaya and, you know, make people feel good. And they forget that they're actually there to provide value and sell something. You, know? you see what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. So how do you... And, and I love the way you do it. I love, I love the way you said that. Uh, if you're not selling, you're not adding value. Therefore, you need to always be selling. Um, so is the key word there adding value? So the key word's really not selling. The key word is it's adding value. Adding value. You know, and I'm glad you said that because in my workshops, I do ask, um, actually, it's a very standard question. And I said, please, by show of hands, how many of you love to sell? And you know, very few, maybe um, I have one or two people will raise their hands. Very, very seldom you'll have 20% of people that raise their hands. Mm -hmm. And so what I uh, teach people, and I, and I always tell them why I love to sell is obviously creating value. But I said, you know, one thing, there, there are really three reasons why I love to sell. If I had to pick top three, one reason is because um, selling sales is one, it's building relationships and it's building trust but it's also shedding light on something that someone is not seeing. And it's like putting a puzzle together. So you're putting all the pieces together. It doesn't matter which piece goes first, but at the end, they all fit together. So there's something that people are not seeing and your job is to shed the light. You, you are helping them to actually put the puzzle pieces together and there's nothing wrong with it. And you know, you just keep doing it and you build trust. So that's one reason. The second reason I love to sell sales is because you know, there's no, there's no ceiling on how good you can get at it. Um, you can start today and you can be the best salesperson. You just get a little knowledge and you go and you practice it. And when somebody says, well, we have an Ala, we have Ala today and she's an expert at sales. And I said, no, 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 wait, wait. I said, I'm not an expert. I love to talk. But I said, if I am an expert, that means I have arrived. And I haven't arrived because each one of us can get better and better every day at anything that we're doing. And really the third reason, and I think it's really resonates with them. I said, I love when I get a no, you know, and when I tell people I love getting a no, they're like, you what? And I said, you know, if I got a no, it's not crickets, right? It's not silence. So if somebody gave me an answer, it's a gift because then I can take this gift and I can figure out what is it they're not seeing and I can provide the information and I can ask the right questions. And then we go, of course, we're going to that what, what questions should you ask? Because people have no idea what questions to ask. So I teach that. And that, of course, that goes through my people, product, persuasion um, system. But that is, um, you're so, so right. People don't like to sell and they're looking at it. Oh my gosh, you know, I'm here to just take money. But also, it also stems that from the fact that I think the statistics show that there's only 13% of customers feel that they're understood. And these statistics are very, very low. And I really try to bring these statistics up front and tell people, you know, you really have to understand your product. You really have to understand people. You have to understand you and you have to understand the competition. And if you do all of that, sales will be a beautiful thing because you're delivering value, you're providing value. And at the end of the day, you get people excited for what you have to sell. That's really good. So you have, uh, by the way, I really like your website. Uh, again, the web website is sellyourselfforsuccess.com. I want to come back to your website design in just a minute. Before we go there, I just I want to talk a little bit about, you know, you're, you are a sales trainer. Um, you do live courses. You do online courses. Um, you do speaking events. Uh, all of which is very nicely put together in this sellyourselfforsuccess.com website. So here's a tough question for you. 
there's thousands, thousands of sales trainers out there. Why should I go on your site and learn from you? Because what you will get from me is, it's a great question. You know, I tell, always tell people, what makes you different? What makes you different? And you need to know that. And I provide, what I do is I have a very unique way of connecting with the audience. I have a very unique way of explaining whether it had to do with the way I was learning English, with the way I was learning myself. People, I provide, I provide the tools that no matter who you are, whether you've been in sales 20 years, 30 years, or you just started, you can apply them immediately in your business to close more sales. You can do that right in my workshop and then that has happened before. So I make it so easy for you to understand. When you leave typically 97, I think the statistics show about over 90% of sales training, you will be forgotten within seven days. That won't happen when you come to my workshops. So I give you very easy to follow strategies and easy to follow training that you can apply immediately to attract clients, grow your business and grow your sales. So how much time should a salesperson spend getting trained? I mean, what, what kind of time should be spent there? You know, it's not even how much time. I mean, you, you need to have personal development all the time. I mean, people should, do, should be doing personal development daily. As far as sales training, you know, there's only so much you can absorb. So when somebody comes to my workshops, I mean, there's a lot to learn. And I tell them, I give them highlighters, actually. And I said, you're going to learn a lot of information. And I want you to highlight two to five things that you can do that you know you will go out and you will practice because those things will, those things that resonated with you more than others, obviously you're going to learn a ton and you're going to go and you go out and practice. So it's learn knowledge, activity knowledge, right? So I've had people that will come back to the same workshop two to three times and they said, oh my gosh, what I have learned today, I don't even think I've heard it the first time I came. So they went and they practiced something, they came back, they gained more knowledge. So I think it needs to be consistent. You know, when, when people are in corporate world, so when I was in corporate world, when I was in oil and gas industry for over 25 years, corporate accounting and finance, the company spent a lot of money on each person for training. And then somehow when we become entrepreneurs and we leave, people fail to spend, they don't want to spend any money because they don't think they need it. Right. And so I encourage, you know, the biggest, the single most important asset that a business owner has is ourselves. I mean, we are, you are, but I tell people you are your single most important asset in your business. Why would you not invest in yourself? So, you know, come and get some training, go out and practice and see how much better you can get. So there's a Excellent. lot of aha moments. Yeah, very, very nice. Now, I want to go back to your site, uh, sellyourselfforsuccess.com. Did, did you design that website? Did you have a team do that? How did that come together? Um, I had a lot of ideas. And um, I'm lucky for me that I have <laughs> my other half is um, my husband that I've been married to for 30 years. He, um, he, has, um, he, does, he does web design as well. Okay. So, but it was my ideas. You know, it's the most difficult thing is to know exactly what you want on it, where you want it, in what spot, in what place. And so I design all of that. I am very visual. And so when people land on my website, I want everything to be in front of them so that they know exactly who I am, what they're getting with me. There's no questions. There's no pretenses. They can see immediately testimonials from people that attended my workshops. But it was really my design, the way I saw it and how I want it to be viewed when somebody lands on my website that has never had any dealings with me. And, and it's very important that on, right on my homepage that they can see um, my association with the charities because mm -hmm. life is about giving back and giving back makes you such a bigger person. It's not always about us and our business. It's what we do for others and we lead with love and kindness and and I can honestly say that every morning when I wake up, my I am statement always starts with, I am, I am here that I can help some kid, you know, improve their life. And so my mind immediately shifts to, 
not on what's going on here or, you know, the negative things and, you know, we live in a negative world, but how can I help someone? And so I start my day literally, who can I call? What can I do today to help, to help a kid? No, it's great. Now we're going to close up with the charity work because you and I are involved with the charity together. And I, I promise you, it, <laughs> it's funny because yeah. Ali is so passionate about the charity work that, uh, you know, if we would have started with that conversation, the whole podcast would have been that conversation. Yeah. So we want to get the business stuff <laughs> out first. You have such, such amazing content and I want to make Thank sure you. our listeners learn from your content. You. They already have so well. And I encourage people to go to sell yourself for success.com and just check some things out there. And you know, who knows, maybe you, you, you might want to join a workshop or something like that and have all I help you out with some things. So that'd be real great. So, um, so yeah, the, so going back, we have a lot of listeners that they're, they're trainers. Um, they, you know, want to create a presence online. They want to create a presence in social media. Um, so I want to steer this questioning, this, this, this questioning right now more towards that group of people I love how you've set up your website, how informative and simple it is, but you have a theme. You have a, it's like you have a strategy or a theme that goes through all your social media that I've noticed. So everything ties together. So the website ties to your Twitter account, to your, you know, to your Facebook account, to your, um, uh, oh, I just went blank to, <laughs> to, to your LinkedIn. Instagram. The most important one to LinkedIn and Instagram. So you have a common theme that goes throughout. Do you do most of that work yourself? What advice would you give to a person that is trying to create that online presence? Because again, it goes back to presence, one of the four Ps. You definitely have presence in your online world. You have presence in your social media. So do you do most of that yourself? You and your husband do all that together or how does that work? All of it. I do all of it myself. I do not wow. have, my husband doesn't get involved with that. The only thing he'll do is, oh, can you please add an extra workshop or an extra speaking engagement? So I do all of that. And you know, what I have to tell people is it has to be genuine. And you know, there are days when maybe I'm not inspired to post anything and that's okay. But when I do post, it comes from the heart. It comes from activities that I've been involved with. It has to be authentic. And, you know, and authentic, there's, you know, there's a lot of talk nowadays, you know, you have to be authentic, authentic seller, authentic this, authentic that, but what does it mean to be authentic? It's not what people expect you to be. And authentic is being who you are and, you, and to be okay with it. You know, I have struggled with my um, accent and I am okay with it. Um, there are days when I don't post and that's okay. And it's okay that, that there's maybe a day or two that I don't post, but when I do, it comes from the heart. It comes from something that I have encountered that day. And I do all the posting. Thank you for saying that. Um, I do all the posting myself. Uh, so what advice day. would you give to somebody that's trying to create that presence? You know, how, how other than being authentic and coming from the heart, but I'm even talking about your creativity. I mean, you, your banners all look kind of, you know, they, they, they all tie together. Your website is kind of the core. Yeah. Then when you go to LinkedIn and the other places, there's, there's a common theme in your colors and in everything in your banners and stuff. Um, it, and it's simple. It's not like it's super complicated. It's, it's super simple. Um, you know, originally it was created, um, all the banners and everything was created, and I just took and ran with that theme. So as far as the colors, there were, um, the reason there's a red color is because apparently, which what I've learned that every industry has a color and sales is red. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's, that's that. And then um, as far as gold color, when I first got this idea, a, a beautiful mentor said, um, gold, that's your gold system. You know, when I was just trying to figure out, um, you know, and I think I mentioned to you, Nancy is actually my mentor. And I went to Nancy and I said, you know, this is what I'm thinking. I really think I'm going to start this company because I have so much to offer. And then I told her it's about presence and people, product persuasion. And she said, you know, that's your golden system and you should. And so 
you asked about the color, so you're getting the true answer. So that That's is the great. reason why you see it. red for sales and gold is, that is my golden system. Um, originally it was actually green and I was thinking, well, green's money, but you know, money always, money, if you're doing something just because you want to get to make money, I think that's what makes salespeople pushy. Right. And so I love the fact that it's a golden system and this is my golden system and I teach people my golden system in sales. And so I took that original theme and so I kind of tried to stay with that theme with the same banners and with the same colors. But that's where, wow. that's where it came from. You asked. Very, very <laughs> cool. No, that, no, that's that's really cool. Now I want to back up for a second. Something you said that you struggled with your accent. And, and this, I think this is a real important discussion to have. Um, you struggled for a lot of years with your accent and I would propose to you, and I'm sure you've heard it from many other people that your accent is actually one of your biggest assets. Do you, do you find that that's the case? Is that, have other people told you that? Uh, people just say, Oh, I love your accent, but I think, you know, and, and I think it's great. I think the accent piece came is when I used to knock doors, when I would mm -hmm. knock door to door. And I was afraid that people wouldn't understand me, mm -hmm. what I had to say, because my accent now it's, I call it Texan, by the way, it's part Russian, part Texan. But at the time it was very, very heavy and possibly the word embarrassed maybe, or people wouldn't understand me. And so the smile and the kindness was let, I started with smile and a kindness before I would start speaking because I knew that once I start speaking my accent, I was afraid that I would not get through the door because of the accent. Either people wouldn't understand or for whatever reason. So I did struggle during sales time when I was doing originally when I started to sell, you know, people would be maybe turned off by the accent and a lot of it had to do with presence and the smile and there are no barriers to smile and a kindness probably originated from not being able to speak, you know, properly speak proper English or, you know, the A's and the D's was something you struggle with when you're just learning the English and you don't pronounce word correctly. And so that's kind of when that started. Yeah. So I, I bring that up for a reason because I think a lot of times the things that make us different are the very things that are, are our biggest become or can become with the right attitude can become right. our biggest asset. You know, and your accent's a perfect example of that. I would venture to say that if, if you knocked on my door and you did the smile and everything else and you began to speak with that accent, the accent's actually what would draw me in because the accent makes you different than any other person that knocked on my door. So, and now I want to attribute that to people who are listening right now. You, every one of us have some kind of uniqueness and it may come across initially like it's a negative. And I would venture to say that whatever makes you different or unique, even if it appears on the surface to be a weakness, actually becomes your biggest asset because it makes you different. Here, let me give an example. Um, it, just follow, uh, follow music people, follow people in the music industry. And there's a lot of, of, of people that are coming up that have very unique sounds, unique voices. You know, let's take, uh, oh, I, I know oh, who's the, the famous singer. Um, I, I want to say Allah, but that's you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I can't think of her name right now. It doesn't matter. But the, 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 the point is, is that in order for people to be successful in the music industry today, they have to have a unique sound. You cannot be a me too person in the music industry. It's just, there's just too, too much, too many, too whatever. You never want to be a me too. You know, a lot of people, they, they try to, they try to change what's unique about them so they can be like the successful mentor is or the, you know, so-and-so is successful and they talk like this, so I need to talk like that. Well, no, you don't. You need to talk the way you talk. You need, you need to be you. You need to be you and all of your uniqueness. And, and I think your accent is, is part of that. And uh, so, so I think that's a real powerful message for all of us to, to hear and to learn. Uh, I like to do rap music. 
<laughs> it's a crap, you know. And, and some people like that, some people don't. I don't really care because I like to do it, so I just do it, you know. <laughs> so, but I think that that's ultimately that's what draws people to you. And you know, at the end of the day, and, and that's another thing that, that I've that I've learned, and I learned from people like you is that. You know, there's going to be people in this world that just resonate with you. And that those are the people that you want to go after. There's going to be people that don't resonate with you. The people that don't resonate with you all are not going to buy your products or service on your website. Yep. But there's so many people that will. Those are the ones that you focus on. And everybody that's listening, hopefully you're all listening to the same thing, because every single human being resonates with thousands of other human beings. So it doesn't matter what other people think because the people that are going to be critical of you are the ones that don't resonate with you. So why would you focus your effort on that? Because there's thousands of people that naturally do. So anyway, I just, I, I just, uh, it's just kind of a seg uh, or a, a spin off of the discussion that we were having. All right. So we're going to go to the subject that we've all been waiting for. And certainly you have, we have the chance to work together, uh, on the Nancy Lieberman charities, which my goodness is just incredible. I started a charity several years ago called the McCabe Avenue Foundation. We wanted to give back to the kids in the inner cities. I have a unique story about my upbringing of living in the inner cities and having unique experience with people from def different parts of the world, different ethnicities. Um, and it really defined a lot of who I was. And so you know, as we began to have success with our companies, we wanted to give back to the inner city kids, um, teach principles, you know, teach positivity, uh, provide opportunities that these kids otherwise would not have, provide scholarships, perhaps, things of that nature. So we've been establishing and bringing up and putting this, um, putting this charity together, and then we are introduced to Nancy Lieberman. And her cause resonated so much with mine. You know, my first story, I was an all white kid that moved into an all black, or I was, I was a white kid that moved into an all black neighborhood in Baltimore, Maryland, McCabe Avenue. And, and I went down McCabe Avenue the first day, only white kid in the neighborhood, not accepted by people at first until uh, somebody did accept me. And when that person accepted me, then others did as well. And, and I have numerous stories about that. Nancy Lieberman, who's a Hall of Fame basketball player, coach, incredible, incredible personality. You know, her story is so similar. 12 years old, she hears that the best basketball players are in Harlem. She's from Queens. And she gets on the D train or whatever it was and goes to Harlem as a 12-year-old. You know, lies to her mom saying she's just going down to the park, goes yeah. clear yeah. over to Harlem, a place yeah. she shouldn't be. Yeah. You know, redheaded white girl going into yeah. Harlem to play with 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 male play male basketball players. She's female. And uh so we have very similar stories and that that defined her life. Uh, mine defined mine. So we decided to just kind of join forces. Tell us a little bit about Nancy Lieberman Foundation or the charities. Oh my gosh. Um, so we do so many things, you know, our mission is really to serve um, underserved kids, um, underprivileged kids, um, and provide um, help with their mental and physical well-being. And we pour into them now so that they, when, when they grow older, grow up, that they can make, they have all the tools to make the right decisions. You know, and we do that through different programs. Um, you know, one of the programs is, you know, we have a backpack program and we have given over 15,000 backpacks to, to the kids, you know, um, in the communities. And as you heard Nancy's story just the other day, you know, growing up, she didn't really have a backpack. And so now we give, we give backpacks to these kids and they absolutely love them. You know, they have a brand new shining backpack you know, they possibly have never even had a backpack or maybe they've never had a new backpack. They have always, you know, it was passed pass me down. Um, we have, um, we give laptops, uh, we have, we give um, um, iPads and, you know, we just gave 
um, iPads at our um, celebrity golf classic on Monday to 20 kids. So we give iPads to kids so that the kids can be on the same equal playing ground as other kids. So they have means, you know, to do their homework. We also, so that's an, uh, one of our other programs. We have a day at the office that we just had last week where um, four times a year we bring, I, through the ISDs, we bring 20 deserving kids and they get to come to an office setting. So, you know, and they get to hear, they get to hear from leaders, they're possibly from the president or CEOs or people that work in there. And then also we, um, to inspire the kids, the kids get, um, we have a mentorship program. We give them, um, we give them a business cards, you know, they're gonna, hello, my name is Johnny and I'm gonna be this and that. And so we have a mentorship program and we stay with these kids. We also um, give scholarships. We have given uh, 55 scholarship to, scholarships to deserving seniors. And what I so truly love is that we don't just give scholarships and say, bye, see you later, have fun in college. I mean, Nancy actually stays in touch with these kids and she has such a big heart. I don't know how she has time for everything and everybody, but she wants to know what is going on in, in your day-to-day -day life. You know, how are your grades? What happened to your boyfriend, girlfriend? Um, so we help them get internships while they're in college and then as they graduate as well and we stay in touch with these kids. And then of course we have our dream ports. We have opened over 84 dream ports throughout the country and dream ports are, um, are of play spaces, basketball play spaces, we have over 3.7 million kids a year that utilize these spaces. So they're actually playing basketball, they're doing something productive, it's good for their mental well-being, it's good for their health, they're not on the street doing drugs, so they're, they're playing sports. We're also partnered with the local police departments, where, and you know, these programs, we're partnered with police departments to build, it's a bridge, we're, we're building, um, it's a, a bridge between the communities that we serve and the police departments. So um, we have even given, we give basketballs to the uh, police cruisers to keep, they, they keep in, in their trunk. So if they see kids playing, if they see kids on the basketball court on one of our dream courts and they don't have a basketball so that they give them a basketball to play and they will come and play with them as well. So we have just incredible programs and you know we're all impacting the lives of the kids. And since inception, uh, since 2008, we have actually given over 6 million to these programs, which is incredible. And we have two large fundraisers throughout the year. We have two big events. One is our Celebrity Golf Classic that we just had on Monday. And then our, um, our next big event is on February 17th and it's called the Dream Ball Gala. And we have usually over 850 people in attendance. We have a lot of celebrities. We bring in the kids. You actually get to see the kids on stage and you get to hear the stories. You get to hear who we are. You really get a feel. You get a room of 850 people who all just love and support what we do. They feel it. You will feel energy like none other. I mean, you will feel the love and kindness. And if you get a, a chance to be a part of us, you know, come join us on February 17th. We would love, would love to have you, to have well, everybody uh, come you join know, it, it's, it's so fun to hear you talk about this because you light up like a light bulb. Like it's just, you know, those who watch this on YouTube can just see <laughs> the nonverbal. <laughs> you love. When you start talking about these kids, you just light up, like you resonate. It's what I love about you. It's what I love about Nancy Lieberman and, and all of, uh, you know, you kind of spelled out a lot of the things that, that the Nancy Lieberman Charities does in, in these cities. And when I first heard all this and, and was exposed to it, I was so impressed. I was like, well, I, I don't need to reinvent the wheel with McKay Foundation. I just need to join, join with you guys because you really want to do all the same things. And it's just incredible. In fact, we're working on one of these uh, courts in Baltimore, Maryland, where my story started and uh, hopefully be doing that uh, uh, early next year. So we're excited about that. Well, listen, it's been an honor, an absolute honor to have you on here. Um, we, we appreciate all that you do. Uh, we probably ought to take a look at your schedule. I'd like to have you come be a speaker at the 2020 Relationship Marketing Grand Summit, which will be in Dallas, Texas. So I'll have our people get with you and 
we'll see if we can set that up because I think it would, it would be wonderful to have you come and, and teach people those four P's the way you do it. So appreciate so much you. you being with us today. Thank you, Cody. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. It's, it's a pleasure and it's an honor and it's a privilege to be on your podcast and to partner with you guys. And um, thank you. We're just honored and humbled and looking forward to an incredible journey. So there you have it, everybody. Ala Bardov, uh, Ala Bardov, she is with the uh, sellyourselfforsuccess.com. Please go on that website, check it out. She's even got an ebook on there that you can click and uh, watch or, or read the ebook. Uh, I haven't had a chance to read the ebook yet, but I'm, I'm anxious to do so. And uh, it's just an honor to have you with us. And thanks everybody for listening in. Make sure you tune in. Uh, share this with other people and make sure you tune in every single week because we always have uh, incredible guests on with us. Take care, everybody. We'll see Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. If you have enjoyed this episode of the Relationship Marketing Podcast with Cody B., be sure to subscribe to the show and leave a review so that together we can get this message, The Power of Human Connection, out to the world. You can find Cody's new book, The Power of Human Connection, on Amazon or the Send Out Cards gift store.